surrounded, surrounded. Your love is everywhere, and I'm surrounded. It's got me singing, it's got me shouting, and now I wanna tell the world about it. 'Cause now I am alive. Yeah. Sing, oh oh oh, your love for me. No matter where I go, I know you're there for me. Oh oh oh, your love. Your host for the Loop Show Survival Games. This week's challenge is all about silence. Shh. Ricky and Jamie are not allowed to make any noise. Shh. Also, we've added two new items to the picnic table of doom: Vegemite and prune juice. The winner of today's challenge will get to choose what goes in their backpack and also what goes in their partner's pack. Here's our challenge. The silent seat challenge. Using your special silent seat onesies, one at a time, you must silently sit on the three items here. We'll be monitoring you with this decibel meter. The quietest one wins the survival challenge. Uh -huh. Are you guys ready? Let's get you suited up. <laughs> okay, this decibel reader here is going to measure how loud you sit on the items. <laughs> Let's bring in your special seat onesies. You're up first, Ricky. Okay. Let's bring in the first item. Crispy. Okay, Jamie, you're gonna sit on that and that's gonna measure your sound. Let's begin.
That is talent. Okay, Ricky. You're up. Jamie was too loud. All right, let's go for round two. Tea time. All right, Jamie. Let's bring in the second prop. What a lovely sound. Okay, Ricky, you're up. Jamie was too loud. Okay, Ricky won two. Jamie lost two, but it's not over yet. We're gonna do the third item and average out the numbers to see who the winner is. Jamie, you're up. Wooden balance block party game. Oopsie daisy. Ricky, you're up. See who the final real winner is. I mean, Jamie was too loud. Ricky wins. Champion. Okay, stay tuned to see what Ricky chooses from the picnic table of doom.
We speak to God through prayer, but how does He speak to us? Do you ever feel jittery or antsy, like your mind just won't rest? Does it feel like the noise and the distractions of the world are beating down on you? Well, what if you withdrew for a while? See, Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness for prayer. In the middle of Luke's account of Jesus, right in the middle of a busy chapter where Jesus was healing and forgiving and teaching, it says that Jesus withdrew from the crowd. He knew that solitude realigned him with God. Jesus put himself in situations where he could silence his mind and listen to God's voice. See, it's a life-saving skill to find retreat. When space scares us, we tend to fill it, but seek space. Slow down. What if we allowed God the space to talk to us? What would we hear him say? It can be hard to find stillness in our world today. You probably have times where you feel stressed, anxious, or completely overwhelmed by all the things that are expected of you. God knows exactly how you feel. Remember, Jesus lived as a human here on earth. Can you imagine all the things that people expected from Him? He had crowds of people following Him everywhere, asking Him for healing, teaching, and miracles, which is why Jesus regularly made time to get away from the crowds, to be by himself, to pray and meditate in stillness. God wants to be your refuge, which is just a fancy way of saying your safe place. God tells us to spend time in His presence, not just to pray or read the Bible, but to be still and listen as well. That's all that meditation is, listening for God. So how do you do that exactly? Start small. Set aside five minutes where you can be alone and quiet. You can sit on the floor, on a chair, or even lie down whatever's comfortable for you. Close your eyes and start to focus on your breath. Notice where you can feel your breath moving in your body. Maybe you can feel the air moving in and out of your nose. Maybe you notice your chest or your ribs moving in and out with your breath. Maybe you can feel your belly moving in and out. Focus your attention on that place where you feel your breath moving the most. Begin to lengthen out your breath, inhaling slowly and exhaling slowly. Don't worry if your mind wanders. It always will. When you notice that you're thinking about something else, focus your attention back on your breath again. Be aware that God is always with you. He will never leave your side, and He is always on your side. We just forget that sometimes in the busyness of life. You can choose to sit quietly for a few more breaths, or you can choose a verse from the Bible to meditate on. If you don't have a Bible verse memorized, you can read one slowly. Pause after each phrase to think about what that phrase means. Read these verses along with me now.
The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths. bringing honor to his name. Taking just a few minutes to focus on your breathing and to remember that God is always with you, guiding you and giving you everything you need can help you feel less stressed and a little quieter on the inside. If you don't have to set aside a special time to do this, you can do it whenever you feel like you need a little break. Try doing it before you start your homework to help you focus or before bed to help you relax. God is always there. Okay, Ricky, since you won this challenge, you get to pick two items from the picnic table of doom. Okay, this week, give yourself some space. Pause and retreat, unplug and withdraw. Be still and listen. In the stillness and in the madness, God is there with you. Will you listen to his voice as he's inviting you closer to him? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are near to us in the middle of the chaos, in the middle of the madness, the busyness and distractions of life. You are there right next to us, cutting through the noise so that we can hear your voice. And what I know is that all around the world, there are those of you who maybe have never felt the presence of God near to you, but today, maybe you're feeling that for the very first time. And what I hope you know is that God loves you so much, that God wants to be near to you, that God is near to you but maybe it's because of the distractions or the noise of life that you just haven't ever taken the time to simply be still and feel his presence. What I hope you know, though, is that God made a way for that to happen. God, 2,000 years ago, he sent his son Jesus to die on a cross for you and for me so that we could be forgiven of all of our sins. We could be made right with God. It didn't just make us better. It makes us new. God wants to make you new. God wants you to know him 
because of how much he loves and knows you. And maybe today you're realizing that that's what you've been missing, a relationship with God, and that that is what you want. And if that is you, then guess what? That gift is called grace, and it is completely for free. And God is offering that to you today. So if you're in here and you want to say yes to Jesus, to make the most important choice of your life, then simply lift your hand right now. All around the world, what we know is that there are students making that choice for the very first time, and we are so proud of you. So everybody pray with me together. Repeat after me, dear Jesus, forgive me. I'm turning from my sins. I'm turning toward you. I need your love. I need your grace. And I need your mercy. I give you my life. And everybody said, hey, man, hey, we are so proud of you for making that choice. It is the best decision you could ever make in your life. Now, here's the thing, though. Before you leave, please tell somebody because we want to help you grow in your new journey of following Jesus. So talk to your small group leader. Tell somebody so we can help you grow in becoming a follower of Jesus.